Well, so much going on. And of course, yesterday, the mayor of Ottawa declared an emergency, which is funny because hours earlier, he said it was just a festival with bouncy castles. There's so much politics going on and so much politics pretending to be policing. Well, police took their political orders literally and started making arrests in the city, but more bizarrely started seizing jerry cans of gasoline or diesel fuel. The reason that's important is so many of the truckers are actually living in their cabs of their trucks, so they need to run their engines for electricity and to stay warm in the cold Ottawa winter. Those diesel uh, jerry cans are not illegal. They're not prohibited in any way. Transporting them safely is an offense neither under the criminal court nor under any bylaw. Plainly going up to people with an armed officer and demanding they hand over their diesel is bizarre and strikes me that if it's not accompanied by a search warrant, maybe an act of theft in itself. Joining us now is someone who probably knows the answer better than me. He's a criminal lawyer based in Ottawa. Our friend David Amber joins us now. David, nice to see you. Thanks for taking the time. You're so busy today. Give us a quick uh, update on what you've been doing the last day or so. Well, thanks for having me, Ezra. We've been getting a lot of calls uh, since the mayor declared the state of emergency and the police have been moving in. We've been hearing a lot of stories of arrests. I've been getting some calls from people in custody. I've also been getting calls from a lot of concerned citizens who are just shocked, frankly, as to the police nature of, of, of our city and our society and how it appears to be, be going. I think uh, to address your uh, comments, Ezra, about the jerry cans. I think the most common thing we keep hearing over and over again is this arrest for either aiding and abetting or attempting to aid and abet the commission of mischief under the Criminal Code of Canada. So that appears to be the hook that they're using to uh, to, to to go through with these uh, these arrests and these seizures. Uh, and maybe you talk a little bit more about why I think that might be problematic. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, it's such a such a stretch. I, I'm guessing the police say, well, just do it. And by the time we're brought before a judge, the damage will be done. These truckers will leave. I think a lot of this is just to try and scare them away. But you said something I, I'd like to ask you more about. Um, we've seen footage of the diesel fuel being taken. I'm going to call it stolen, frankly, because I don't think they have the color of right to take it. But you said people are in custody as in they were arrested. And they weren't just released right away with a ticket or, or a summons. They were put in jail? Tell me about who's in custody and uh, what they're in custody for. Well, I received some calls, Ezra, from the police, uh, people in custody, advised people in custody regarding, uh, again, the arrest for aiding and abetting uh, the commission of mischief. And uh, I've not been able to speak Today, I've not been able to reconnect with anybody who I spoke to yesterday. I did connect today, though, with someone in my office who was arrested. I uh, didn't speak to him yesterday, but he was arrested. His property was seized. And after spending a couple hours in, the, in police custody, the police released him with no charges uh, and just say exhortation to stay away from the downtown core without any any lawful basis to require him to do that and and there's no actual uh, enforcement mechanism for that just say essentially be a good boy is what they told him after depriving him of his liberty for several hours and having him have to go across town to get his car out of impound huh so i mean I I, I understand it if charges are laid. I mean, police can have some authority, but for the police simply to scoop a guy off the street, hold them, and then and then give him a direction on where he can or can't engage in a peaceful protest, that is a very troubling thing. And I, I think this whole thing is suspect. On the one hand, police have been abusive over the last two years in general, but I think that they have been pressed to the limit. The police chief in Ottawa was outrageous with his press conference the other day deeming this protest unlawful. That, I'm sorry, I don't think that's his place to do. Threatening a bizarre enforcement, he called it surge and contain. I've never heard those words before. Saying he's working with national spy agencies to collect private data on everyone in the peaceful protest. What's that other than a, an enemies list? I think that the Ottawa Police Service has allowed itself to become a p political enforcement arm of Justin Trudeau and the regime. I'm deeply concerned about it. And what you've just described, someone being pulled off the street, 
thrown in jail for hours and then released with no charges. I, I'm sorry, but that's what happens in Caracas, Venezuela or Havana, Cuba or Tehran. That's not what's supposed to happen in Canada. I, I tend to agree with what you're saying, Ezra. I think that if there were charges laid, there would be a number of, of areas of those charges which would be difficult for the Crown to prove. There would be constitutional issues. There would be constitutional issues not only with the enforcement, but with the uh, with any, a, a, any suggestion that uh, the criminal code uh, would trump uh, the charter rights that are, that, that are in play. I, I will say this, though. Um, it's been a lot quieter today. Uh, I'm not sure if you could see, but I'm here in my office. I'm right downtown, 450 meters south of of the uh, center of, of the protests. And it's a lot quieter today. And I think that uh, although uh, I think protesters and I, I support everyone's right to protest and to do so noisily, I think that the hook the police were using to be able to lay these or at least do these arrests for mischief was the extremely loud noise, which has been going on for some time. So I think that it's to some extent a strategically good thing that the noise has calmed down, at least temporarily for now, because I think it deprives the police for being able to claim that a mischief is ongoing as they're hearing it. I think uh, I'm not saying that it would survive in court, but I'm saying that police might have been acting on the basis that members of the, or citizens of the city of Ottawa were, were not able to enjoy their property with the loud noise. That noise gone, I think so goes any realistic basis to have laid these arrests. So I think strategically that's a good thing. And I've not been hearing of there being as many arrests today, but we're going to have to see how the day uh, continues. Well, that's very interesting. I know you're so busy. You put your phone number on Twitter, always a risky move. You're going to get a lot of phone calls. I know you already have. Um, and yesterday I called you up and I said, hey, we will crowdfund the legal fees to defend anyone who, because I was very upset with what I saw yesterday. Um, I talked to the Democracy Fund folks today, and as you know, the Democracy Fund is the independent charity that's doing a lot of these civil liberties cases. So Rebel News is going to send all the cases to the Democracy Fund, and I know that you've worked with the Democracy Fund too, so we will still continue to help everyone who's being arrested this way. It'll be done by Democracy Fund lawyers, and of course, you've worked with them before. So our offer stands. It, it, it just won't be Rebel News doing it. It'll be the Democracy Fund. I know that's a distinction without a difference for most people, but I, I tell you, I know the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms has also been on the ground in Ottawa, so there are some civil liberties lawyers doing their best. You're one of them. David Amber, great to see you again. We'll let you get back to it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me, Ezra. All right. Our pleasure. There you have it. David Anber, one of the lawyers that the Democracy Fund is deploying in Ottawa. Stay with us. More ahead. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day. Then I interview an interesting guest. And then I read my hate mail. You got to subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.